Hey, everybody. Welcome to ABA Inside Track, the podcast that's like reading in your car, but safer. I'm your host, Robert Perry Cruz. I'm here virtually with my fabulous virtual co-host, Virtual. Hey, Rob, it's Diana. And it's Jackie. Hi. So, you know, uh, we are recording our May preview episode. So this is our episode where we talk about what is coming out in the ABA Inside Track podcast, which is, in case you don't know, a podcast about behavior analysis and behavior analytic research. Uh, so every week we have an episode about a given topic in the field and some articles to describe it. And so this May, since if you're watching this right when it comes out, you know we're in the midst of our shelter at home or cho chosen quarantine or in some cases forced quarantine. So we're really practicing our social distancing really well. Uh, I don't trust Diana at all, even though, you know, we've, we've been living together. We have our kids here. You know, I, I don't trust anybody. So I'm bunkered up here. Diana's there. Jackie, I don't know where you are. You're in a cabin in the woods somewhere up, up north, perhaps? It's, it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So we decided we would we'd do our, our remote, remote preview episode to tell you all about what's coming up this May in terms so, of episodes. Hey, Rob, I hey. want to share something about May for you. Please so Di do. Diane and I love the phrase, it's going to be May from the song, <laughs> It's Going to Be Me by uh, Justin Timberlake and Friends. And so for some people. I know, NSYNC. I could. I didn't want to say NSYNC in case it was like Backstreet Boys. So I, yeah. So I just wanted to say friends. <laughs> um, and uh, I found a meme on the internet that said, "Roses are red, April is gray. The next time you leave your house." And then it was a picture of Justin Timberlake. Get it? It's gonna be May. <laughs> and I, I shared it with my students because we had a meme off mm -hmm. for preference assessments. Uh, and they didn't understand it. So I'm uh, sorry yeah. if anyone it has been listening to our show and you haven't understand, uh, understood, it's gonna be May. <laughs> what you need to do is go to whatever you listen to your music on and and download the InSync album. I'm sure there's only one. And <laughs> listen to the song, It's Gonna Be Me, and then you'll laugh because it sounds like he's saying it's gonna be May. You know... For all you young people out there, when we were all children, you watched what was on TV, and most of the time it was reruns. So you knew all about history from like the 50s up to the 80s and early 90s. So all the references, they're like universal references. Mm -hmm. But now there's too many, there's too many references. There's too, too many much references. of everything. There's no way, you're, anything that's two years old, forget it. If you weren't there, you don't know the reference. It's, it's sad. It's a sad state of affairs. Just but anyway. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. It's I'm sorry for the children of the future. I forced my children to listen to all sorts of old jokes and watch old TV, and uh, just because I, I feel like they're going to need that information someday. You're going to need to know the font. Someone goes, "Hey, you need to know." Oh, you're referencing the font. The TV show Happy Days, made in the '70s, about the '50s, as opposed to most people who go, "Who cares?" That's like a million-year-old TV show about a time even older. Might as well be the dinosaur. Sure. But this isn't a podcast about that. No, I already did what our podcast was about. We were just sort of <laughs> just going off on an unrelated tangent. So you're all probably tired and you don't want to see our virtual heads anymore. So why don't we get into what our topics are for the month of May? And Diana, could you do a little, uh, we're going we're gonna to do some technical wizardry here to avoid having yeah. to edit as much as we usually do. <laughs> so Diana's going gonna to get a, a behind the scenes look at our ABA Insights <laughs> uh, file, files is where, you know, we can we get our articles, we'll, we'll put some notes and things. So we're gonna, we're gonna have a picture of the articles that we'll be reading so that if you, you know, need to pause and wanna look at the citation instead of listening to it, well, there, there it is, it's right there. So Diana, on my, on my tiny phone screen, this is very small. What, what is our first topic this month? First topic this month is going to be resurgence. Resurgence, let me see if I can, here I come, I'm gonna pinch and zoom. Ah, <laughs> now I can see what it is. So the first article we'll be talking about, so we'll be talking about resurgence, which when I first uh, heard this as an idea for an episode, I said, that's not an episode, we're not doing it, not gonna happen, but uh, I was convinced otherwise, and I'm glad, I'm glad I was, because it was Eventually a topic you that came I around learned to the about, idea. and I wanted to learn about it. I even read an extra article, because there was miscommunication, and so I read a terribly long <laughs> article about uh, equations and resurgence, and I loved it. You know, I loved it even more. 
So I'm sure you will all love it too. This was a so, listener request. <laughs> so Jackie wants to throw that listener under the bus. I say, <laughs> listener, yeah, we do listen. Even if it's not a topic that Rob wants to do, we still listen to our listeners because we care. It's a good topic. So, it is. It is a good topic. Yeah. All right. So the first article we read and we'll be discussing is an evaluation of resurgence during treatment with functional communication training by Volker Lerman, Call, and Trosclair Lasser from the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis, 2009. The next article was implications for practice, resurgence, and differential reinforcement of alternative responding by Bloom and Lambert, also from Java, but in 2015. And serial alternative responding, well, sorry, response training as intervention for target response resurgence by Lambert, Bloom, Samaha, Dayton, and Roadwald from Java, also from 2015. And if you really want a bonus, resurgence is choice, implications for promoting durable behavior change by Greer and Shahan from the 2019 Java. Mwah, it's a little extra for you right there. You want some equations? We got them. They got them, actually. All right, so that's resurgence. Our All next, right, next, up, after, next huh? up after that is going to be behavioral economics yes. primer, I guess you could say, with a very special guest, Dr. Eric Reed. Mm hmm. So what do you do when you don't know anything about the topic that you're trying to talk about? You find someone who could talk intelligently about it. So we had Dr. You know, we have Dr. Reed coming on the show and we're very excited to hear him talk all about his research in behavioral economics. And you'll note that there is no pattern in some of these articles other than the fact they are interesting articles about behavioral economics. So authored you're ready. by Derek. Authored, yes, authored by Dr. Reed. That's the pattern. You found it. Good job. <laughs> okay, so our first one, temporal discounting of tornado shelter-seeking intentions amidst standard and impact-based weather alerts, a crowdsourced experiment by Jolino and Reed from the Journal of Experimental Psychology Applied 2020. Then, Predicting adverse consequences of alcohol consumption in underage college students using a novel fake ID purchase test by Nowday, Foster, Bartley, Martinetti, Ayers, and Reed from Experimental and Clinical Psychopharmacology 2019. Then some notes. Questions. Don't worry about those. Those are our <laughs> questions and notes. Price elasticity of illegal versus legal cannabis, a behavioral economic substitutability analysis by Amlung, Reed, Morris, Aston, Metric, and McKillop from the, uh, from the journal Addiction in 2018. And finally, a very nice think piece by Tom Critchfield and Dr. Derek Reed, the fuzzy concept of applied behavior analysis research in the behavior analyst 2017. So behavioral economics. If you like that show Freakonomics, you're going to love the episode on behavioral economics. It was, it was really fun talking to Dr. Reed, so. We got our xylophones, too, so we could have do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. We could get all the sound effects. We nice. Didn't really. And then our last topic, we are excited that we uh, got to present at the Tex ABBA convention in late April, although we did so virtually. So if anyone was in attendance there, they heard this talk, but we also got permission to release it as an episode on the show as well. So our topic that we discussed for the Texaba conference was promoting pandemic safety measures. It's highly relevant to the current situation. All right, so we've got a lot of, a lot of articles here. So the first was Economic Considerations for Social Distancing and Behavioral-Based Policies During an Epidemic by Feinschel from the Journal of Health Economics, 2013. <laughs> Every episode, we find one journal we've never heard of before. There's a link, there's some notes. Ah, here's another article that we discussed. Effects of Response Cost and Socially Assisted Interventions on Hand Hygiene Behavior of University Students by Fournier and Barry from Behavior and Social Issues, 2012. 
Utilizing group-based contingencies to increase hand washing in a large human service setting by Bowman, Hardesty, Sigurdsson, Mikavor, Orchowitz, Wagner, and Hagopian from Behavior Analysis and Practice 2019. Oh, we didn't actually do that one. That was a bonus. If you'd Skip like it. it. <laughs> we didn't discuss it, but it's there. It's there in our maybe pile. And then uh, we also did promoting hand sanitizer use in a university cafeteria by Boardline from Behavior and Social Issues 2020. And then we had two articles that kind of uh, were kind of the thinking part of the of the the end of the talk we did, but we thought were, were relevant to the overall discussion of widespread behavior change. And they are climate change beating the challenge by Chance and Heward from the Behavior Analyst in 2010. And virtual rewards for driving green by Pritchard, also from the 2010 Behavior Analyst on sustainability. And that is what we will be discussing this month. So I hope you look forward to it, to download and listen to. Or if you went to Texaba, you already watched some of that. So yep. congratulations, you did it. You saw our faces. Awesome. You dressed up nicer. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rob wore a tie, so it was pretty exciting. Did. I almost wore this exact outfit, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so, want to make, just make you feel good about it. Yep. Right. So even though we've all been doing our part to social distance, we have had some interactions with other people still. So I feel like that's probably healthy. So we did go to the virtual version of the Tex ABBA conference. Hopefully we saw some of you guys there. It, they had a lot of good uh, stuff out. So it was pretty exciting. And then we've also been doing some collaborations this month with some other varied podcasts. So at the, at the very end of March, uh, we had done an episode for Mary Barbera's podcast called Turning Autism Around, and we talked about positive parenting. So you can listen to us over there on her channel, if you hadn't checked that out. Um, her podcast is called Turning Autism Around, and it was really fun. Like We love that topic, so we reviewed some of the stuff that we talked about in our positive parenting episodes, which were 67 and 68. And then also um, our review of Sidman's coercion and its fallout as well, which I think our episode is 90 and 91, although it might be off by one on those. Um, so we kind of did a mashup of those two and talked about that. And that was super fun. And then uh, in, the, in the April month, more towards the end of the month, we talked with the guys from Behavior Chef and just chatted with them about kind of what it's been like, how you all are attempting to maintain some healthful habits during each of our respective home quarantine times. So you can check that out over on their channel. So it's been good to stay in contact with some other folks in the field, for sure. Mm -hmm. We've also been in contact with our listeners via email and YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> Is this the errata <laughs> section of the show? No, I guess it is, yeah. It is. I'm just errata. There it there is. There we go. Ooh, I'm not adding the words and stuff. <laughs> so now you just get the hand. Errata. <laughs> Coming out. So one thing I think was fun, listener David wrote us, uh, and he said that he regularly listens to us and he found the episode he finds the episodes information uh, informative and thought -prov provoking, and he encourages his colleagues to do so as well so thank you david okay. uh he recently uh listened to our episode 113 on visual inspection of data and he thinks this is a really good uh episode to have others listen to particularly because it talks about the importance of baseline logic right mm -hmm. so this is def this defines aba and distinguishes it from other behavior change models um and so i think that I think that is a good thing to remind students because they're going to be graduating this month, right? And so this might be a nice episode for them to review for the BACB exam because baseline logic is a pretty prevalent uh, topic along, you know, in the exam. So that might be something that you can listen to. Uh, we've also had a, a huge, huge, huge um, response to our free telehealth episode. What episode number is that, Diana? Uh, number 119 is our episode with Dr. Um, Espinoza about telehealth in Italy. And then 120 was our episode called Telehealth Grab Bag, where we kind of pulled from some different areas. 
Right. So though uh, the episode 119, or you said 118? 119. 119 uh, was featured in the Asset Online uh, resources uh, for information regarding telehealth. So that's something that you can reach out. But we've had a lot of uh, listeners write out saying that they love that. So yeah. thank you um, for being part of that and providing such really thoughtful information for us. Um, so if you haven't checked Thanks that one out, Dr. Espinoza, cause it was all her right. and it's really oh, awesome yeah. to hear how she was able to put together what she did. So thanks for coming on. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we had a, we also, you know, do check out YouTube and someone, um, Paulo let uh, left us a message on YouTube, uh, in episode six. So bringing it back, bringing it way back a recent, um, comment and said, wonderful information from this study. I'll take it, this info back to work with me and hope to see some improvements in my session. So, Paula, let us know. And that um, was our episode with Dr. Amanda Kelly, right. a behavior babe on pre-session pairing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, you know. Well, that was back when we had one microphone. Yeah. But we could all be in one room. So it was, it worked out True. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So thanks everyone you know, for writing in, uh, we'll get back to you within a day or so. I, I recently talked to a BCBA candidate and she's like, you wrote back. And I was like, of course we wrote back. We're people. <laughs> yeah. um, so write us and we'll write back to you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So thanks. Well, yeah. So thanks to everyone for writing in. If you're interested in co commenting on the show or joining in on the show, well, number one, you probably want to get the podcast. You can get us. Uh, we're ABA Inside Track on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you like to download your podcast. You can also find the episodes posted to YouTube, like Paolo did, where you can turn on the YouTube subtitle feature. And of course, you can get them on the website, abainsidetrack.com, where we also, also have links to all of the articles that are discussed in each episode, and links if you'd like to purchase CEs from us, or if you want to go to our free CE section, where we list the episodes that were for free CEs. Uh, and then where else? Oh, of course, social media. Of course, social media. We're everywhere. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram as ABA Inside Track. And of course, you can always just shoot us an email. And like Jackie said, we will write you back at abainsidetrack at gmail.com. If you write uh, Diana or Jackie's name, they're better with email than I am. But I, I've been trying to pick up some slack on email too. So you might even get an email from me saying, I'm not sure the answer. Let me ask Jackie or Diana. <laughs> and then they'll write you back later. But you know. How special. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know some of the answers. They're the doctors here. Just, He's just a pretty face. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> that's why they hired me. <laughs> All right. I think that's everything. Uh, so we've got another month of great, great episodes coming out. So please, please keep checking in to see what's coming up. And then after that, it'll be June. And then hopefully we'll uh, all be back in the, in the same studio the next time around. But, you know, we'll see. This didn't work out too badly, right? Well, until uh, next time, uh, thank you, Jackie. And thank you, Diana. And thanks all of you out there for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week for a full-length episode. But until then, keep responding. Bye. 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 Rob, will you slide me some dinner under the door later? Oh, yeah, you got it. No problem. Thanks. <laughs>